Welcome to the Eagle Eye Podcast. The number one show to bring you all things Club America and English. Oh, what a strike, Club America! Your hosts for today are Ivan Pineda, Cristian Rosendo, Alexis Juarez, and everyone's favorite cowboy, Dylan Jimenez. Go! Now let's hit the field and start the show. America! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Eagle Eye Podcast. Today, we're going to be recapping everything that has been going on in, in the world of Las Aguilas de la América. And as always, joining me today are my beloved co-hosts from the East and West Coast. Let me start with none other than Christian Rosendo and Alexis Juarez. Gentlemen, how are we? I feel bad right now because you're the one with the webcam, but like I have no shirt on right now, so that's why I have the webcam. All right, that we're starting off strong. TMI right away. A little, a little bit of TMI for our listeners. But it's hey, raining outside. If you guys want to see Christian shirtless, just let us know. We'll maybe Chichis uh, para la banda. Do, do, yeah, we'll do maybe like an OnlyFans or, or something. For it. Wait, that might that that might actually work though. We should talk about that like off. off yeah, we'll talk a little bit about okay, that. That's fine. I'm doing well though. Obviously, obviously, I'm very content over the moon. Uh, over these past two performances, I'm sure everyone is as well. But job's not done yet, right? We still got four games to go, um, two at a time, right? So next one's on Wednesday, and let's just keep our heads straight and um, keep keep going for the goal. I, I 100% agree with that statement. AJ, how are we? Doing great. What a time to be an America fan right now for both the men and women's team. Women's just smoked Pumas 6-1 in the Casco Italino. And America, we smoked that Puebla pack. So, you know what's up? We out here doing good and um, just keep the good vibes going for America. 100%. I can agree on that. And now let's switch it over to the West Coast. Uh, let me introduce Chris. Chris, how are we? Good. Shirtless as well, you know, just in okay. case. Okay. Is, is this the thing? Like, is there Yo! Monday shirtless Mondays? Did I not get a memo? Like, I have Mondays, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, ground. Yeah, man. Everything's good. You know, our weather's getting way better, better over here. So. Yeah, we had quite the quite the rain this past yeah. weekend as well. So. so chilling, you know, and obviously you can't be in a bad mood if America's winning the way they're playing and stuff, you know. So I I agree. I, I think we're all kind of over the moon in that sensation, but um, we'll talk a little bit about it. I, I don't think any of us can really. Well, it, it's easy to get carried away with 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 the results and everything, but I think the team has to continue to stay level headed and grounded throughout yeah. this year, and I think Christian, you mentioned the two games at a time, and then you kind of know the objective at the end of the day. But, all right, gentlemen, let's talk about this. El Mame does it again. They cement a stamp of authority in this tournament yet again, beating Puebla in a 11-2 to aggregate scoreline. Um, quickly, I just want to take – I just want to get your guys' kind of thoughts and reactions, uh, first and foremost, to the end of the regular season, which was against Puebla. We ended up winning that game 2-1. to one. How did you guys feel coming out of the regular season, knowing the way that we closed it, especially the way we started it? And then after that, give me your two cents about these, uh, about this, you know, two-legged match where, let's face it, we were completely dominant. So I'll throw it to you first, Chris. Uh. The last game of the season against Puebla, I really didn't have much opinion of it. I think that game was – they treated it as a throwaway game because the way they were trying to feed Henry to – so he could get his uh, his goals and obviously didn't get it. But that, to me, just felt more like a throwaway game. And then the Liguilla game against Puebla, well, it, it just – like obviously you're, you guys are saying don't get carried away or anything, but this is the type of America that – we all pretty much if either you lived through it in the in 05 or you heard about it and stuff like this is the, the our philosophy right it's ganar golear and just play the most beautiful football that we could play and honestly like i can't be more happier obviously the you know job's not finished but i think we're heading into a very historic ending we're going to end this in a very historic way I like it. I like it. I mean, I I think I have a couple of things that I want to point out. Two clean sheets would have been nice. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that would have been oh yeah, of course would have been nice. But um, you know, credit to Puebla for getting their goals, and you know, we'll we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about that first leg in, in a second. But I I want Christian and AJ to be able to give their two cents about everything. So Christian, 
your take on it. You know what's funny too? Because Puebla did score the first goal of the whole series, right? And then yeah. I could already just picture everyone saying, here we go again, right? Let's yeah. try to mount the comeback again. Let's get a draw here and let's bring it, try to come back in the Azteca. Um, but what Chris said though, um, this is exactly what we knew this uh, America team could produce. Um, I don't know if it's the level of 6-1 in the first leg, on the road especially, but definitely a demanding win. And, and what we did over over these past two games is pretty much send the whole statement to the rest of the teams that are left is that we're, you know, we're here to win and we don't care if we're up seven, one, six, one, eight, one, we're coming to both games with all the power. And that's exactly what we did. Cause even though we rotated in the second game, we still won by four goals. Um, and we put up five. So it's, it's definitely, definitely a statement to everyone. Um, I can say everyone besides maybe two players I'm extremely happy with, um, those two players we'll talk about in a minute. But overall, it's a 9.5 out of 10 performance for me. 9.5. Wow. That is high. AJ. Um, What is there to say, really? I think the score like speaks for it for in itself. To see 11-2, you don't see that every day in Liam Eckes, especially in the playoffs where it's, complete, where it's completely different from the regular season. For America to do that in those two games, like Chris say, that we know we're not here to mess around. We're going all at it. Even though you think already that with an 11-2 lead like that to just thrash Puebla in that first round, I was thinking like, oh, <clears throat> America are going to definitely be the fan favorites. You look at someone like Dan Ortiz, you just see that calm and composed look on him. He's like, we still have work to do. Yeah, we got, we cruised through the first round like nothing, but now we got the semis and um, finals just right around the corner. So the next thing to do now is just fo focus on the semis and we do and we do our job just like we did in quarterfinals, make it to the finals. All in all, Good performance in these two um, games for America. Um, the players got it done. Ochoa made me upset. Tapio would never allow for now. Tapio would never allow, allow that to happen. Come on, come on. <laughs> those two goals, those was very unacceptable. Nah, but <laughs> oh no, though. Like, yeah, well, I might have gotten the goal, but then just from there on out, we pretty much just took control of that match. And from there on out, well, I didn't really have an answer at that point. Yeah, there was two two very important things that both uh, AJ and Christian point out, and um, and then I just want to kind of bring them to light a little bit. So we have uh, we obviously knew that our opponent was going to be Puebla. We go into the Estadio Cuauhtémoc on Wednesday, and um, Puebla gets that lucky rebound goal. Right? How lucky can you get? It's one of those goals that you know you you tend to concede on FIFA. You don't really tend to concede them during the Ligas. But like Christian mentioned, that goal goes in and you kind of get a sense of the, the ghost of Ligia past, right? It's like, oh, here we go again. We got to go be the comeback kids. And again, we're, we're going to struggle to find anything. And that wasn't the case. I, I, I like the attitude uh, of the players knowing that, okay, it was a lucky goal. They got a rebound. And so what? We're just going to go out there and continue to play our game. And there's something very interesting that I don't know if you guys note, uh, noted from the Last game of the season, which was the, the regular jornada against Puebla at the in comparison to the first leg of the Liga, that was a two very different America side. America was a little bit more uh, reluctant to give Puebla the ball in the second leg. And in the first leg, they completely let Puebla go as they pleased. We were very happy just to go hit them on the counter, um, which I think I, I didn't really like it. But in, in this Liga, we said this is our game plan and this is our game plan going forward is we are a very possessive team. We're going to hold the ball and we're going to go, we're going to go out there and we're going to showcase exactly our talents. And that's exactly what America did in the first leg. And in the second leg as well, though a little bit less so uh, because of the scoreline, but I think it speaks volumes, Chris, of this America side that you mentioned, right? It's uh, kind of giving us a lot of reminiscing uh, memories of what 2005 was, but this is a squad that regardless of what's in front of them they are going to go out there and they're going to play their game they're not going to play it to the liking of their opponents they're going to go out there and do their game play at their style and i think it was very admirable from america to go and score the six goals away at puebla because usually you can just kind of tuck it away and be like ah oh, three to one i think this is comfortable we can go to the azteca and kind of see it through but at the end of the day america goes scores and scores and scores and scores and scores you walk away with a 6-1 victory again very notable stuff and then of course Tano Ortiz at the end of the, at the end of that match says no nothing's won yet we still have a second leg to go and we still have to go out there and close this game out yeah man I think from a mentality standpoint like 
can't complain about anything, right? Like, it, 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 it's Liga Mexicana, and we've seen it before that there's always some weird comeback. And just because we win the first game 6-1 doesn't mean you're, you guys have to sit back and, you know, relax. Tr- like, trust me, like, it's probably – Probably people say, oh, well, that's the smartest things to do, right? You already have the game packed up. Well, <laughs> we've seen it in Mexico that you never have a game packed up. And I like the fact that Dano said, you know what? I'm going to rotate players, but you all have the same assignment, which is go and completely destroy that team, right? Even if he probably doesn't even say it like that, but he obviously has this uh, philosophy of you're still playing this game at 0-0, and you're gonna you're gonna go and look because even in the friendlies that we had, right, the 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 leagues cup and the friendly against Chivas, the the mentality was the same thing: is go in there and win. It's not a pointless game. It's you're gonna get your rhythm going, even if it doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. Like it means something, but it might not mean something to the the eyes of the public, right? Yeah. No, yeah, I, I agree in that and in that aspect, and I think Tano has definitely instilled that kind of mentality in them. Christian, I, I think some people would argue that maybe uh, America's scoreline was a little bit flattering due to the fact that we probably got the weakest opponent possible. And, and, and I mean, is that a fair assessment to make? Do you think that this was kind of like a, you know, the, the fact that we got Puebla, that's why we were able to score so many goals? Or do you think it's merit to, you know, America doing what they have to do? And even if it was anybody else, we would have been able to make the same scoreline. Mm-hmm. So um, I just think that well, that wasn't the worst team out of the twelve that that were that were competing. Um, but I will say this though, um, we I think Chris hit on the on the head when he said the mentality of all the players that come in and are starting. It's all the same because even when we rotated on Saturday, you know those guys that started on Saturday. They're still they they want to start. They want to prove to Tano that they can start. So the fact that we got all that performances from them in the second half of the first leg and all throughout the second uh the second leg just shows volume and speaks volume of the mentality of what Tano was able to do. Um and we I just think we were just you know we were just money those two days. Um I think you put any team in front, I think we could have probably put put up four or five goals on any team, to be honest with you. Um, but like I said, I think we were just money those two days. Uh, will it happen on Wednesday? I, I sure hope so. I think everyone would like that, right? But uh, it's gonna be very difficult against this team. But I'm very hopeful that we could still put up good performances. Thank Can you. I add something to that? Yeah, go for it. So, you know how you're asking if you know the we face the weakest team, and AJ, like, correct me if I'm wrong. Since Repecha has started, there's only two teams that have been consistently in Liga which is America and Puebla, right? Mm-hmm. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, I, so, I, I so that. if you're going to judge it off of maybe this is this this season, okay, maybe I'll give you the argument. But you're talking about two teams who have continuously with the same project been competing, you know? Like La Cramon and uh, – or I hope I said his last name right. But, La and, yeah, and uh, and this – it's a Baños it's a, it's a bang- project, if we're being honest, because we've been through – three coaches now but we've been the most consistent so i don't like if there's someone's out there saying that we face the weakest team i I don't like that because let's give credit where credit's due we're talking about one of the most regular teams since this repetitive thing has started no i agree i agree Mm -hmm. but i think it's it's you know you have to merit the the argument there saying you know that that there's you know that discussion going on in and around itself. But like I, like you mentioned though, I think credit to Puebla because they got themselves this far and granted, maybe they didn't have the best of seasons, but they still were able to, you know, mount up something. And again, it, it was never going to be an easy task for America, even though it, America made it look like it. So we'll see what's going on. So let's move on into the second leg, AJ. After America smokes that Puebla pack on Wednesday, they have to go in and, and again, do it. On Saturday, or at least see out the game. Did you in in your wildest of dreams? Did you expect another goleada of the way, or did you expect this America side to be a little, especially after seeing the rotations, that this was America going to be a little bit more, uh, you know, relaxed, a little bit more nonchalant, and a little bit more like ah, let's just kind of run down these ninety minutes. No, I would have never expected that in my wildest dreams. I just simply thought, you know, 
when you're leading aggro is 6-1, you're just thinking, just close the game out. Get the players who don't really haven't been playing that much, whether it be in regular season or in Ligia, you give them some minutes. And then you see this uh, different rotation just do the same thing like they did in the first leg. You're just like, they really mean it. As like Donald mentioned, even though you um this is a completely different lineup, you have to still the same. The assignments that you need to do, you need to understand it and execute it properly. And these guys did it exactly as is with a completely different lineup. They got that job done in the Azteca. They let themselves know that regardless of an aggregate score, you're treating it as if like it's a different game. Like you're still down 0-0. They played it and they got the job at the very end. So really with America, they um did a good job in what they had to do in this game, especially with, with the uh, completely different rotation. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, 100% kudos to those players. And, and you know, when the lineups came out, I think all of us were like, okay. I I, I honestly thought he was going to give the starting 11 another 90 minutes together to gel. But I understood why he gave the rotation that he did. Um, any of these players, gentlemen, that played on Saturday that did not start on Wednesday, any of them catch eyes and be like, hmm, maybe this guy could potentially start on uh, against in the semifinals? Brian Rodriguez. Brian Rodriguez. Yeah. I don't know if it's like for sure he starts, but yeah, for sure, Brian Rodriguez. So I'm not going to lie to you. To. Uh, right. So I'm not going to lie to you. So I think in the, I think it was the first, the first half of the leg. And they was getting me a little annoyed, honestly. It oh, wasn't, I know. He wasn't, he was very inaccurate in his passing. He, the runs he was making wasn't good. The dribbling wasn't there. And it's not just that game, which I can forgive him for, but it's kind of been a recurring theme for the later half of this season where, Maybe something is happening, or, or I don't know what's going on, but he hasn't been the same from the first half in Dejas, where we all were like, wow, this guy should be an automatic starter for the national team as well. I think it's died down a little bit from that. I'm not saying that Brian should automatically take over, because I, I still think that Dejas does start. But it is something to note that his game has fell off just a little bit, in my opinion, which may be a hot take. I'm not too sure, but no, that's it's not the way I was take. looking at it. He loses the ball a lot, and that's one thing. Like he, he either doesn't connect with the run or he loses the ball a lot. So, like, I, I, I see it too. The only thing is that, and I think it's not, I don't think it's just him. I think it's everyone in that offense. Yeah, I see that, that too. Is that they I have, they, really... they have those moments, but it's like they'll punch you in the mouth. And I, I say this a lot, but it's just one of those, like, like these goals are coming out of pretty much anywhere. And it's not just coming from one side, it's coming from everyone, even players that are not having the, the best game. Another player that you could name is Roger. Roger got what two assists and a goal. Like you could easily say, like if Thanos says take out Cabecita and put in Roger, I think you still put in, you know, like it's the, it, you, yeah. you could justify it, you know. That's true. No, yeah, I agree, and and I, I was alluding to that because I think I was alluding more for Brian Rodriguez to take Cabecita's spot. I just I I did not like Cabecita whatsoever against. No, in the first well, in the first leg. Not the sure. man has slowly been dying off, and um, this is not what you need from your star no, uh, from your star signing uh, when, in, when it comes to Ligia. Yeah. Um, but he's unselfish. That's the thing about him is that, you know, a lot of people talk about Henry's goals, right? But Cabecita was up there with him in, mm -hmm. when it comes to goal scoring. And in the second half of the season, I felt the reason his goals kind of went away is because of the simple fact that he's became more uh, – Pass first, goal second. Then he, he gave the assist to Vinas, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, so he like, and he could have shot if I'm not mistaken. He could have shot at that goal. And it's just one of those things where, like, we we could sit here and like highlight. And you're not wrong. No one's wrong if someone says this player didn't perform. But it, like, they're also getting in the stat sheet is something that you know Roger gets criticized a lot for. And he ended up with two assists and the goal. And everyone's just, you know, I think we're just headed into the right direction with with this team and you know props to Thano in the end of the day yeah look at us here arguing about complaining about players after beating a team 11 to 2 on aggregate oh uh, it doesn't get more americanista than that does it AJ? only yeah. america fans could relate <laughs> just america things it's america things 100 percent um but look at the end of the day i think uh you know like chris said kudos to Tano ortiz for you know getting bringing out the best in these players because let's be honest he he really has i mean we talked about solari doing something with roger martinez but i, I think we've seen probably we've probably seen the best roger under tan ortiz would you say christian 
Um, I probably I, I would think so. Uh, especially right now, it seems like this. He's really embracing this kind of sub role. Um, he's looked quite well to me, and like like Chris mentioned, two goals, uh, two assists in the goal. It's not something you know you you just pass over, right? So, um, honestly, if Dano does do it, I don't think he will. I think he'll just stick with the same eleven like he's always been. But I wouldn't mind seeing him get a shot, uh, whether it be in the first or second leg. And let's face it, Roger has delivered these past two games where he has started against Puebla. Let's face it, he scored that amazing golazo in the right. in the last game of the season in the Estadio Cotemoc. And then, of course, that tremendous goal from outside the 18 on Saturday. So, like you mentioned, it, 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 it wouldn't hurt the team if you put in a Roger Martinez, who seems to be finding some form there. So, but uh, Christian, you did allude to two players that did not catch your eye whatsoever. Uh, who are those two? Yeah, so the first one we talked about in brief right now was Cabecita. I just like, like Ivan, you mentioned the first leg just wasn't really appealing to me. I think he was literally one of the only players who wasn't doing what needed to be done from him or what was asked of him. Um, the second one, which may be this one, maybe a little bit of a hot take, but I think Nestor Araujo uh, really As was, uh, was, was a player. Better. Was a player that I was like, oh, like he's he's a little bit shaky here, especially in the in the second leg. Um, he he was the one that basically uh, assisted Maxi and the, the Puebla goal. Obviously, yeah, obviously, yeah. we knew it wasn't gonna do anything. So let's be honest here, right? We already had the series in the bag, right? But still, though, it's just those little key things. You can't make those against a team like Toluca. You can't make those against a team like Pachuca or Monterrey. You know, that's it's not gonna fly through. So, but I think also also as a defensive unit as a whole, I think it's been a little offbeat if you would say yes um i don't i don't think they've been performing to the level that they need to be granted you know whatever uh given the situations of what we were doing we were up by so much you know people players could get lackadaisical we we know that but this is a this is the time where you really need to buckle up because it's you know you have these two games and these could be the last two games of the season right if you're not if you're not sharp and if you're not focused at 110 percent no, yeah, I, I completely agree. And Chris, I'm gonna let you take the the microphone in just a second because I know Nestor Araujo is probably um, someone you're very much advocated for. But it, in the defensive side, I think Christian, I think you, you you bring up a very good alarming point. We have not looked sharp, and we gave away the ball too many times to Puebla. And let's be honest, a couple of those shots went a little bit wide. Ochoa had a really good one that he blocked, but uh, I mean, another team with a lot with another sharper, you know, forward. It can make you pay for the said mistakes. And you're talking about, and I'm not just talking about Nestor who gave away that pass, but I'm talking about Emilio Lara who has looked very shaky these past couple of games. Um, and, you know, Cáceres, again, sometimes looks very good. Other times I question him very much so. Um, so, Chris, take it away. What, what's 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 going on in the defense? Well, for me, it's, it's Lara. I'm I'm not that surprised because after hearing his uh, his reasoning why he's Araujo, he's right. Araujo does look shaky at times, and if we're being honest, it's even Fuentes looks shaky at times too. Like I, that goal that uh, Cortizo had was because uh, Fuentes left them on, you know, left right, them in. right. I forgot to mention that. You're yeah, so right. like it, 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 it's our. It, we need to get better on defense. Obviously, it helps the fact that we're scoring a lot of goals, but, you know, they say it in football, but you could pretty much say this in, in, in soccer too, you know, that defense wins championships. And you can't have here, uh, have Ochoa, rely on Ochoa blocking you 10 shots a game, you know? Right. You can't, you can't rely on that. You, Lara needs to work on his, uh, on his marking, especially on set pieces. Araujo, I think Araujo and Casillas are going to be good, you know, and, Fuentes is just father time. Just like there's moments when you see it in game that father yeah. time is catching up to him, and it's part of the game. It's not nothing against him, nothing against anybody. He's still performing at a very, very high level, but there is that moments where you're just like, come on, man! Like, you know, you're better than what you're showing. Yeah, yeah, it's the decline of everybody, right? Like when they get to that age. But yeah. I think I think Fuentes can squeeze four more games of and, and give us a good performance. I think yeah. that's more than capable of doing that. But um, and it's it's fair criticism, I would say. And Christian, thank you for pointing it out. I think it, it thank you. It was definitely had to be brought up in that context of of things because um, this is at the Lucas side that we're going to be facing now uh, coming up. That's uh, I mean, you guys saw exactly what they did to Santos, and so. 
granted, I would argue our defense is better than theirs, but still, you know, you give them chances here and there, and, you know, they took them. So this America side is going to have to try to do, you know, better, and we'll see what happens. I mean, Nacho, uh, you know, Nacho Ambriz knows exactly who he's going up against and the magnitude of this matchup, and it'll be interesting to see how they plant themselves on Wednesday because they do have home field advantage, but... Um, I think it's important that, you know, like we mentioned, AJ America do exactly what they've been doing, and that's playing to their game and not playing to their opponent. Mm-hmm. 100%. And just things like, and to just to add on to the defense, knowing what Toluca has with guys like Charlie, uh, with um, Carlos Gonzalez, Camilo Sanveso, Menenses, Navarro, those guys will punish our fullbacks, given if you got someone like Emilio Lara. You see glimpses of what how Guignac just completely like shook him off as of nothing. Those kind and these and those kind of situations, you definitely cannot be giving too much spaces to guys like San Beso and Gonzalez because they are gonna punish you. That entire defensive um back line looks shaky at times. Considering that how big of a lead that we had in this series, it's one of those instances that you really cannot let your guard down. Cause now we're gonna play against Toluca next. They're not the same like Puebla, they're gonna be different. They have the players that could definitely shake up full, our, our full box and exploit spaces if we're not careful. So just for that next thing against Toluca, just that entire back line need to be on their A game. But then back to uh, make it just playing the way they want to play. Yeah, of course. Don't play to your point. Play, just play like yourselves. Do the game plan that you've always been doing. Don't really need to just too many things into the game plan. Just been doing what you've been doing all season long. I agree. 100% agree on that aspect. But how we feel about uh, Toluca, gentlemen? Angel, you, you had the mic left last. I'll give it back to you. You know, out of all the opponents we could have possibly gotten, we get Toluca. How are you feeling knowing that that's our semifinal opponent? Um, Maybe you want to say this is more of like one of the easier paths we might maybe get into a final. But at the same time, I'm not underestimating Toluca in any way possible. I just have um flashbacks of what they've done in previous seasons before. Especially the disaster we had under, under Solam. I'm trying to remember what the scoreline was. It was like a 4 1 scoreline away yeah. at home, was it? Like, I'm getting moments, like, I'm getting throw memories to that again, just know what a Toluca side can do in like the first 10 minutes. They're one of those teams in this league where they like to get on the attack immediately from the get go as soon as it starts. And they're a team that could score in less than five minutes if you're not being careful. And this is something that we've seen with America, which when we look really shaky, Guys are going to keep challenging Ochoa with shots left and right to try to wear him down. And hopefully at one point, he's going to make that mistake and Tuka's going to capitalize on it. While many will say that this is probably the point we want, I'm still slightly just cautious knowing that the attack and the wingers that Toluca have and knowing that what they can do to an America, shot, to an America side where their defense, while most of the time are good, there are specific moments of the game where if they are shaky, it could cost us potentially a game. And there's been points in the season where we could have lost three points or we would have drawn. But the heroics of our attacks from guys like Fidalgo, Henry, Royer, Cabecita, come, uh, Zendejas um, come in clutch and rescue this team. Okay, agreed in that aspect. Christian, how are you feeling about Toluca? Toluca, um, they're a very good team at home. At home, they could really turn up the Jets and really rack up the scoreline. Um, not to say that, obviously, we can't do it as well, but them, them especially is, is very scary at home. Now, the thing that I think people are forgetting to mention is that the Lucas scored six goals and then in their um, and their quarterfinal matchup uh, over two legs. Uh, I think that's something to not really pass by because now we know that they're, they're coming. They're, they're coming to score. So yeah. I, it should be a very interesting battle to see which defense can hold up better. Um, these are two offensive juggernauts, if you will, going at it. Um, I think both games are going to be very, very entertaining. Um, but I do think that America does have what it takes to comfortably win this series. Um, but like AJ said, though, we cannot underestimate anybody. But I do think that we um, we, are, we are in a position right now to, 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 to go into Toluca and get a result, a win, and then come back and then finish it off at the Azteca. I like it. Chris, we have to go away to the, you know, Estadio Nemesio Diaz, a, a grounds that has never been too friendly to America in, you know, recent years that I can remember just watching America. Um, so we know that that's not an easy ground to go to, but 
like we mentioned, even though this is in this is a Toluca side that can score goals over the two legs against Santos, we saw that this is also a Toluca side that can concede goals. Yeah, man, I'm looking at their last lineup, and I I really didn't watch those games, so I can't really sit here and tell you what their their uh, style is or what exactly we have to attack. But what I will say is that individually they have really good players, mm-hmm. and I think it's gonna be the individual uh, matchups that are that are gonna either give the lead or take away or tie. You know, it's it's gonna it's gonna be a very close from a talent perspective. It's gonna be a very very close game. I think Santos doing what they did against them right. Either we're we're uh, underestimating Santos or. Or, the, you know, something's there that Toluca isn't clicking with, you know? Because yeah. I'm looking at their defense and Mosquera, Huerta, or- Ortega, Angulo, like, it, from what I've seen in the past, they're good players. But you also don't have a Santos attack like we have an attack, you know? I think if they play loose, America could very well have another massacre to say against them. We'll have to wait and see and find out. But, I mean, it should be an interesting one. Now, that's going to be Wednesday's matchup at the Stadio de Messi Diaz. That game is going to be at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Uh, Central, 8 Eastern o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. Right, AJ? On Wednesday's game? Yeah. Um, EST, it's, te- it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock yeah. your time? Yeah. So then that's 7 o'clock my time. Wait, are you sure? I thought yeah, I read buddy. You want to go check? Yeah, it's ten, it's ten oh six on Wednesday. I'm not questioning AJ after the whole. Uh... Yeah. The whole... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I remember. laughs> after the whole right, Nikasa thing, I'm not questioning him. <laughs> so either uh, twenty one hours. That's nine o'clock. The so game is at ten oh nine on Wednesday. This is okay. So America tweeted out that it's going to be at nine oh six. Uh, you know, Central Standard Time. You're saying ten some ten oh ten, or ten 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 EST yeah EST yes ten ten and then I got my foot mob uh foot mob apps and it's at one p.m. Great <laughs> and guess what brothers it's a rainy week in Toluca. It's a rainy week in Mexico. Well, it's rainy season just in general. Well, it was raining in Puebla too. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is it, co- is it cold much. over there and and um over there in Toluca? It should be a little uh, chilly. So just cold to rain, give you guys a little bit Toluca. of um. Of a throwback, I guess. This is also in the middle of all of our friendlies and stuff like that. But we actually beat the Luca one nothing in the regular season. Yeah. And in that game, we put up twenty six shots, but only two were on target. Well, let's that, hope we can revert that and have you know, that banger shots. from Richard sixty two to thirty eight in possession. Um. So to say that I think that this is going to be very entertaining, it's going to be very entertaining to say the least, right? But I think that that's the key now, right? And I think we kind of solved it in the last two games is you got to get them on target. And more often than not, with the players and the quality of the players that we have, hopefully some of them will go in if you're taking 26 shots. Yeah. Well, I mean, the difference is here that we're going up against uh, Diago Volpi that had himself quite a game on, mm-hmm. on Sunday. and Scored you know, on Acevedo, by the way. Yeah. Just, just in case you have an agenda towards other Mexican keepers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I do. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Though. So that game's Wednesday, and then, of course, the second leg being Saturday. Um, that one's also going to be interesting. We'll see how that one pans out. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be interesting. I think uh, we have a full squad. Correct me if I'm wrong. The only one that's in doubt is Bruno Valdez to see if he's 100% fit, although I don't think we have to worry much about him. He's probably not going to be starting. Um, so it's nice to know that with this rest and everything, you know, people are, people are looking healthy, people are looking sharp. And I think now it's just a matter of, you know, continuing to do what we've done so far this season, and that's – play offensive football and stay as tight in the back as possible. 100%. So, I mean, we'll have to wait and see from that perspective. But, uh, I mean, is there anything you guys want to add on in regards to what we've been talking about? I mean, I have some stuff, like, related to the um, Puebla series. 
I know it's a lot of people have been criticizing Liu, but that to think of it at the same time, this dude's actually kind of been solid after our friendlies, in my honest opinion. Dude's been solid, I want to say. Okay, interesting. Chris, your rebuttal to that? I just don't like him playing as a fullback. That's all. No, that's it. That's <laughs> he played it. as a right mid this time. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, if, if, when he's playing winger, and, and he's not shooting as much as he was early in the season, he really has improved in – and like I said, he's hinting retirement, and I don't want to be that guy that completely craps on him while he's over here ending his career, you know? Like, it, 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 you know what, bro? Like, let's just win the title, and we'll celebrate you afterwards, you know? No, that's culpa del Lion. I think um, that... Because they're coming at him for... They're coming at him for taking that ball away from Judy and Dom in the penalty. And I think... All right, it's... now I need... All right, that's the second thing I was going to talk about. Yeah. First of all, how dare they call that offside? You don't know... I <laughs> haven't yelled at any other American goal. I'm like, nice. But as soon as I saw Judy and Dom score, a good goal, I will say, matter of fact, did the Ronaldo celebration, took the shirt off, and then only for the call offside. I'm like, that's Jurgen Dam's entire career. He made the right last thing I say, C. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could hear the whole stadium do that. And then only for him to get a call offside. I'm like, yep, that's the story of his life. And he got yellow card too after that. Yeah. <laughs> Who does that to the future president of Mexico? Hey, exactly. how dare you? He's going to really say to the person of the lines. like, I'm going to remember that while I'm president one day. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> oh, man, bar. Honestly, he's about to like forget that. Like for offsides, like I'm going to ban offsides in Mexico. It's no longer a thing in our league. After what they no, did no. to me, he's like, nah. Uh, but yeah, no. But also, I understand. I really wish. Um, like you could have been like the damn like, yeah, nah, redeem yourself, take it. And then he does the celebration again. Actually, yeah. no, he would have got red carded. Now nah, forget <laughs> it. He'd have to restrain himself from doing that. So I, I just think they, they, it, uh, too many people are going at Lightning for that. And it's kind of like, kind we, of we you just me. go at him for everything. Let's be honest. Yeah. He could breathe and we'd just be like, stop. So yeah. honestly, like, I come at him a lot, but it's, I think it gets to a point where it's like, come on, you have to just being private at this point. <laughs> Chris is like I'm being I'm being generic I'm being yeah, yeah like I'm, I'm complaining because he's me. hitting the the ball boys like he's hitting people in the stands with the ball like I'm mad at that but you're like mad at something smaller <laughs> oh wow no well I mean it's shoes but I mean we'll see El Mame continues their good run of stretch of form and now it's a question of you know doing exactly what we did to Puebla or as Dylan our beloved Cowboy put it um. Oh, that scared me. Yo. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was expecting Dylan to come. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> that would have been sick. That would have been amazing. That would have been sick. Oh, I was like, what's going on? The howdy, howdy, y'all, and the tips, the cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been perfect. We're gonna work on that entrance, so for for next episode. Um. But yeah, continue to do what exactly uh, Dylan said, and that's tearing. Uh, Tearing our opponents a new one in whatever context you guys want to take that in. But uh, America side has to continue to do what they're doing. And I, like I mentioned, the most important thing is here, just staying level, level-headed, level staying grounded, knowing that the job's not done. It's one game at a time, two games out of a series. And the objective is clear, right? Everyone talks about it in Coapa, that 14th title. Um, but you can't get ahead of yourself, and you know that you got to take it one step at a time. Um, all right, gentlemen, anything else to add on before we wrap it up here? Don't think so. Israel Reyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, I completely forgot, and I'm staring at him right now in my face. Um, <laughs> yeah, Israel Reyes, gentlemen, how are we feeling about him coming to America? Um, reports are saying $6 million is, is, is the transfer fee, although those numbers always fluctuate at the end of the day. Uh, but it looks like it's all set in stone from multiple sources now. Uh, looks like America's got a new center back, center defensive mid slash right back. Left back, I think. Doesn't matter. He's not gonna play there with us. Well, you never know, Fuentes. I hope not. Once Father Time calls up for uh, for Fuentes, yeah, he's like, yep, that's your new spot right there. So, but who knows? I think we have some pretty good young options off the academy for that left back spot, which I think we've alluded to a little bit. We do. We do. 
But uh, yeah, Israel Reyes coming from Puebla, someone that we originally were targeting for the beginning of this transfer window didn't really pan out, and now we get him in the January transfer window. Uh, your perspective on this, Chris, since you have his picture on your avatar. I like it. I always like the fact that we, when we upgrade a position with Mexican talent, for the simple fact that you kind of get rid of that foreigner spot and you could either add a depth somewhere else or you could... Uh, fix another position with that foreigner spot. You know, I think sometimes, especially in America, we have foreigner spots that are just there and we have players just because they're there. And it's, uh, you could always upgrade, you know, and my thing is if you're going to have foreigner spots taken, it has to be impact players. And the fact that we're upgrading from Bruno, right? And some people would even say from Cáceres with Reyes. Uh, it's perfect, you know, you, and you can also play defensive mid, so maybe some, that might be uh, Aquino, you know, his spot being in danger. It could be, uh, you just know, don't know. And it's like a, he plays multiple positions, so it's just a perfect depth piece for us. Well, you guys heard it here, heard it here. first, Chris, saying that we're going to get rid of Bruno Valdez, bring in Israel Reyes so we can sign Mbappe. All right. Sure. <laughs> I didn't say all that, but... <laughs> 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 it's okay. I read, I read in between the lines. But uh, Christian Israel Reyes, how are you feeling? No, yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's a very good uh, young Mexican prospect, right? Um, and like Chris said uh, earlier, uh, before we got on, uh, listen, it's competition, right? Um, whether we'll, we got to see throughout the offseason um, how how Dano plans to kind of line up his, his defense, right? But the internal competition is never bad. Look look what it's done for the offense, right? Uh, we're, we're just we're, – we're great on in, in every single position, so – um, it's definitely one move that I do like. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited to see how, how it pans out. Should be interesting. All right, AJ, from a Rolfi Montenegro to a Chucho Benitez, where do you rank this signing? Go with the Chucho Benitez signing. Um, really good depth to the squad. He's young, me uh, Mexican, doesn't take up a foreigner spot. That's perfect. As Christian mentioned, that's the um, competition within the defense. That should be a sign for them to do better than they were from last season, actually, um, Reyes, um, he'll be a good, uh, he'll be a good spot to the team. I think he's got the little bit of mechanical in him, all right? He chipped Chivas. He done us all favors, saying <laughs> we're gonna face America. They ended up losing potential sign America. Job well done. What a guy. Look at that. What and, he and did he score against us as well? Did he did he score against us in um this year? No. Or was it or was it during um the regular season that Reyes scored on us? It was no. regular season. Regular season eh. or last league, we placed them last league, didn't we? Yeah, we placed them last league. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't remember him scoring against us a couple weeks ago either. Either way, um, no, he did, he did score on us. He yeah, did. I'm good. I, I, I'm, not saying, I'm not bugging out. It's like I'm pretty yes, sure he did. he did score on us. He yeah, on he us. The, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, um, great signing. Um, looking forward to seeing him in an America jersey for the um, upcoming season. And there you guys go. There you guys have it. All we can hope for is for him to have a much better career in America than Vizcarrundo. That's, <laughs> That's not hard. <laughs> better than Eric Pimentel. So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, there you guys have it. The news of Israel Reyes coming to America. We'll see how that all pans out after the World Cup. We'll probably start talking more American news and how this squad is going to be looking. Um, I'm, a lot of people talking about, you know, expect America to sell X, Y, Z, this transfer window coming up. I don't really see it happening like that. And we'll get into it more later on during the postseason. But uh, in the meantime, right now, we got to talk about what's ahead of us and what's in front of us. And that is Toluca. So time to go give uh, Toluca some chorizo power and then we'll go from there. So we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, all right, gentlemen, if that's it, no one has anything else to say. I think we've pretty much wrapped it up here, no? I think so, man. I'm just excited to get the semifinal started, you know? I agree. I 100% agree. All right. Well, with that, if that does it, then thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you guys for listening. And uh, we'll be back next uh, episode to talk all things Las Aguilas del América. So, El Mame, to continue their good run and their good stretch of form, on to Toluca we go. All right, gentlemen, well, thank you again for everything. You guys take it easy. Stay safe out there. And as always, Arriba America. Good night.
Ladies and gentlemen, this was another production of the Eagle Eye Podcast. The number one source for all things Club America in English. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Eagle Eye Podcast and get all the latest news and coverage. And subscribe to our podcast wherever.